We're on the last three questions posed by DTC members back on April 5th. This first one, whoever wrote it, I love you. What is your position on privatization of state services? You don't hear the word privatization of state services from Democrats very often. So thank you for asking. And this is one Democrat who is vehement about doing it correctly. Indeed, part of my first 700 days in month one, I ask every state employee, how could you do your job better privately? And there will be many of us who see responses about, I can be less restricted and get more done this way. I could hire this type of person. I could be working these hours and be more helpful to my constituents. The more you see that, the better our state becomes. And that very person becomes a supervisor privately. I'm helping, literally, state employees who want to be in business for themselves, the business of social services, the business of, bio, of environmental service, the business of possibly transportation services. These could be done privately. The mantra should be that we use private every time it can be done better than the state. And that leaves the state's functions to where they properly should be, limited to the essential constitutional functions of this state government that can't be done better elsewhere. Number two, what is your position on funding the unfunded retirement liability? Well, I'm pretty forceful here. This is a Democrat who honors contracts. It means that when people made trade-offs for probably less salary in return for a future benefit, contracts should hold. And indeed, we should honor the spirit of contracts. And that means you don't push teachers onto municipalities that could weasel out by bankruptcy. We're going to pay them. Now, I expect to be able to expand our revenues when a governor like me cuts the income tax to zero, when the governor like me cuts the corporate tax in half, and when a governor like me breeds 500 new schools that bring in families and bring in the businesses that serve them, this is a state that's going to grow. So I do think we can grow out of our problems. I'm not relying on it. I put a 15-year limit so that we can retire our debt in less time than it takes a mortgage to be retired. But if growth happens, it'll be far less time. That is good for all of us. Now, going forward, we don't engender high liabilities that we can't control. And that's why I will never, never sign a contract that has a state pension. Pensions are for back in the day when that was about the only thing out there. Pensions were an extra lure when government service was hard to get. Now, many people flock to it irrespective of pension will be still a very good employer that might be able to pay you more. For good people, we should be paying more and let you control your retirements the way you want to and the way the rest of us do. The state then doesn't have to worry about longevity of the retiree. The state doesn't have to worry about cost of living. The state doesn't have to worry about whether the retiree marries a very young spouse who then may live an extra 45 years on our dime. We have to end the program of work 25 and then be paid for another 45. That has to be done. Democrats aren't often used to hearing these kind of words, but you're right if you are looking towards a responsible government like it hasn't been. And remember, I put Republican governors more responsible than Dan Malloy, okay? 20 years of bad governance is going to be hard to wipe out, but it was under their watches that we got into this problem. We get out of this problem by honoring contracts, but setting a new regime, that this is a new form of state government. The benefits for working here and now 
are going to be very good to you, but they're not going to be available in your post work days. If Democrats don't move to this position, you're going to see a General Assembly that goes red in November. Okay? More Democrats need to be moderate the way Democrats of the 60s and 70s and even 80s were. We should be a party that is looked to as fiscally responsible. Business owners don't think of Democrats that way, and we've got a real good chance to change that around. All right, lastly, what is your position on immigration slash deportation? Very complex. Hear me out because it affects municipalities all the way to the feds. And yes, share this with the White House. President Trump, if you have two minutes, hear me out. This governor would protect good immigrants. Let me define good. Good means before you even, even came to this country, you learned basic English. Good means from across the shores, You've been espousing American values. You've tried to move people in your own country to the kind of idealism that we have here. And now that you have come here, good means you're not taking welfare. Good means you're paying for your services. With that, I will protect you from deportation. Some of the Connecticut Armed Services and many of the good citizens who have guns, yes, I'm pro 2A, will protect you. If Jeff Sessions tries to come to deport your family and you're good, you're staying. Now with this, I do believe that we need to protect sovereignty and protect our culture going forward. We shouldn't have a swarm of immigrants who don't care to be Americans and want to change our culture, foisting it on us. They're the ones that do need to leave. If they are not contributing, they deserve to be deported. And yes, we have buses every summer that can take people to Guatemala. We have C-130s that can fly you abroad. I would use them. But it's a threat that should allow people to become the wholesome, full-blooded Americans. And I say blooded because being American, you doesn't care about blood. Uh, being American is a matter of attitude. Anyone, as soon as they are on these shores, can be an American. No other country acts that way. So, it is meant to let immigrants become not second-class citizens, but full-on like everybody else. A monitoring period that makes sense, seven years or so, possible locations in areas that are needing population, Urban areas don't, and they have strains right now because of illegal immigrants. Rural areas could use more immigrants, and I would encourage, possibly by law, possibly by suasion, new immigrants to have their first seven years in communities that need them. Connecticut needs a forceful governor. You have one staring at you. Please engage me more. I've gone through all of your questions. Happy to do more any Friday. You can use the Stuart Speaks line. You'll see me that way. Many Fridays, you can meet face-to-face. -face. We do Whalerland um, events. That's the Newington Arena many weekends this summer.